next thing that we have is our bimini cover, which is like our, our, our sunshade as such. With our bimini cover, the easiest way to, to look at this one, I haven't looked at this one before, is this has got great tension at the moment. Anything with a thumb screw like this is designed to be loosened at some stage. And it has a self tapper through it. They've done that for a reason. They don't want you to touch it. So in this instance, you'll have a thumb screw either side. And this position right now, before we do that, I've got good headroom, plenty of shade, and I have the option for front and side clears to cover this whole section in. I wanna put the cover away into like a stored position. With the cover, going back to that, uh, towing, you, if you're towing down the highway and you're in this shade, full shade position, you, you do have to be careful. You don't wanna be going much over sort of 80 kilometers an hour and you don't wanna be doing anything over sort of more half an hour in, in distance because you're making maximum drag. To put it in a more efficient position, you unscrew this. That's released all the tension off the cover. Same on the other side. And when you do that, it makes this snap hook nice and loose. So I can easily unclip this. Same on the other side. And fold the cover back. Now, in most scenarios, depending on what boat you buy and what it comes with, but at Streak and Marine, we have an envelope. What that means is... put this cover over the cover. We make sure this snap hook is included inside the cover. And then we would tighten these back up to make the, the cover nice and tight. Now, you can use the boat, it's a nice sunny day and you want a bit of extra sun and shade, in, uh, sorry, sun inside the boat. You can tow in this position or use the boat in this position with the cover like it is here. If you were fishing and you wanted maximum casting room, you're fishing for, you know, you're inland casting or you're going for squid or whatever you're doing, by unscrewing this thumb screw completely, and again, the same on the other side. The cover can now hinge either way. Sometimes you can hinge it forward and give yourself maximum casting inside the boat. So if you don't want any restrictions and you got one person casting here, one person at the back, by moving the cover forward, it's gonna prevent um, any sort of tangles and mucking around with the cover. When we're going to uh, put the full towing cover on the boat, which this boat actually has, we're gonna go the other way and fold the cover all the way down here and then the big cover will go on top. Getting back to the actual motor for the moment, Normal unleaded fuel, making sure the motor's in the water before you start it, safety lanyards in, motor's in neutral. When the motor is brand new and it hasn't been run, we wanna run the motor in, bed the motor in. We basically, um, and your owner's manual will tell you what's what and what to go about it with your particular motor. So you do wanna make sure that the information I'm telling you is relevant to what we're looking at here, but you do have to specify on what you're looking at and the owner's manuals for your particular products that you're, you're going with. Um, but generally, your 91 fuel, you um, start the motor, you let the motor warm up and get to an operating temperature. Once the motor's warmed up and it's ready to go, we'll get up on the plane, get going. We'll keep the motor under 5,000 RPM and we'll vary the throttle to bed the motor in through the whole rev range. So we don't wanna stick on the same speed just all day, set and forget at 3,500 RPM want to go through the rev range a little bit. Up on the plane and going, three and a half thousand, take it up to 3,800, bang it up to 4,200, whatever it is, keep it under 5,000 and vary the throttle around to get the maximum sort of um, rev range through that, through that area. And then once you're done at the end of the day, idle the motor back down, let it you know, cool back down a little bit and then you can store it away. Um, once you've done, typically, depending on the brand again, around 20 hours of running, 
then we're going to bring it in for its first service. And after that, we're good to go, but we have to annually service the boat motor trailer once a year. So it doesn't matter if for some reason you didn't get to use the boat much that year and you didn't do many hours, we still need to service everything because we've got to still change trans uh, the gearbox oils and the, the sump oils and all those sort of things, do your bearings on the trailer um, and go through our own um, list of requirements. And it's all preventative maintenance stuff. All the stuff that we're doing at the annual servicing is typically it's long living um, all the products that are inside the boat. So first service will be 20 hours, Listen to your owner's manual and, the, and the, the people that you're buying the boat from. But typically we want to keep it under 5,000 RPM, go through that rev range from idle to 5,000 and um, give it a good vary. Once you've done, depending on the motor again, four or five hours, then we might be able to bring it up over 5,000 for short burst um, and periods of time. And then once you've had your first service, you're good to go. If you've used it around that 100 hour or less mark, service it once a year. If you're active boating, you're doing over 100 hours, we might look at getting it service twice a year. Getting back to that bilge area, uh, the Quintrexes have a fantastic rear lounge, which is very easy to remove. Hopefully it won't make a liar off me. Let's have a look, no, we are good. Thank you. So the bilge area is just here. So we can see there's our battery just here. So we don't actually have to really get to the battery as such. The battery's tucked away in its own, uh, its own uh, little hole there. And it's got a battery isolation switch, which is the switch that we're going to use. The bilge area is just here. And that's where we can see our bilge pump. So with our bilge pump, that's the thing that's gonna pump the water out of the boat if there's water inside the boat before we actually uh, put the boat back on the trailer. But again, that's important that when we're done at the end of the day to undo that drain plug, so any water inside the boat can drain out when it's in storage. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drive the boat forward and we're gonna talk about flushing the motor and the two options that you have to do that.